With all the vinyl subscription services out there, it was inevitable that the biggest metal band on the planet would jump on board. So in this video, I'll show and discuss all four exclusive releases meant for 2022, tell you my favorite of them, and if the Metallica Vinyl Club is worth the money. Stay tuned. So what exactly does a subscriber to the Metallica Vinyl Club get? Well, there are the four 12-inch singles, or EPs this time around, featuring music that has never been released on vinyl before. Also, a digital download card for each release, which I won't be showing for obvious reasons. And the opportunity to purchase exclusive Metallica Vinyl Club merch. Basically, t-shirts, hats, and slip mats with the Vinyl Club logo. Actually, I wouldn't mind one of those shirts. They look pretty cool, but who knows? Maybe I'll get one, maybe I won't. Um, also, after I chat about the EPs, I will go into the current state of the Vinyl Club, which is a bit in flux these days. More on that later. Until then, let's talk some records. The first record released March 21st, 2022 is Blackened 2020. Uh, this is also edition 5 following the releases from the previous Vinyl Club. Uh, my copy is 4597. It's right there. Uh, first track on here, on the A side, is an acoustic version of Blackened. Uh, it's referred to as Blackened 2020 and recorded on May 15th of 2020. Uh, each member recorded their part from home over Zoom and then later it was assembled. Uh, there's also a video version of this, which is how it was released back in May of 2020. So now you get it on vinyl too, basically. Um, overall, it's a fairly mellow rendition. It is fun to hear, but perhaps not the strongest track on the record. Uh, the next track, starting side B, is a live version of the track you heard on the A side, so Blackened 2020 Live, specifically. It was recorded November 14th, 2020 at the All Within My Hands, Helping Hands Concert and Auction. It's very similar in tone to the A side, but a little more interesting as a live track. Uh, I'd say a bit, though. They're both really similar. Uh, the final track on this EP is a cover version of Wood, which was originally done by Alice in Chains. It was originally released in 2020 by Metallica on the Mopop Founders Award, honoring Alice in Chains, a benefit for the Museum of Pop Culture compilation album. Say that ten times fast. Uh, like the A-side track, this too was recorded remotely via Zoom with parts assembled later. Also acoustic, like the others as well. Uh, vocally, James strains a bit on this one, but I do like it, and it's likely the best track of the three. Um, as you get inside this release, uh, it's not just a record, though I will show the record, of course. Um, there are two inner sleeves in here, which is pretty interesting. Um, this one does come in a white paper sleeve. There's no poly line in here. Uh, record looks like that. We have the B-side. Uh, we also have a printed inner sleeve. I guess you can kind of choose what you want here. Uh, there's some notes there. And... Pictures of the four of them as well. Uh, we also get a slip mat with this one, a blackened 2020 slip mat. Kind of cool. I collect these, so I might spin this one at some point on my turntable. And that's it. Uh, basically, blackened 2020. There it is. So the next record, released June 13th, 2022, is Saint Anger Live Rarities which is pretty self-explanatory in that the original versions of these songs are found on their Saint Anger album. This is edition number six. My copy is 4,058 right there. First track is Sweet Amber. It was recorded live at the United Spirit Arena in Lubbock, Texas on September 4th, 2004. Honestly, it sounds good live, not the least to which Lars's improved drum sound, uh, not to belabor that point, of course. Next track on this one, it's also on side A. It's for the Unnamed Feeling, recorded live at Osaka Ju Hall in Osaka, Japan on October, or rather November 13th, 2003. Definitely can hear the crowd a bit more in this one, uh, though more in the bookends than throughout the song. I gotta say, I always dig when you can hear the audience in a live recording. In fact, I basically prefer it. Also, I'm realizing that these St. Anger tracks work a lot better live than their studio versions, at least for me. Uh, this one is a good example of that. It's heavier with more energy. It basically works pretty well live. Flipping over to side B, we get Dirty Window. It was recorded live at Sydney Entertainment Center in Sydney, Australia on January 21st, 2004. 
right away much better than the studio version. I, I, I'm still not a fan of the breakdown parts, but I dig the overall energy in this version quite a bit. Finishing off Site B is Some Kind of Monsters, recorded live at Allstate Arena in Chicago, Illinois on August 27th, 2004. And at the risk of sounding redundant, this live version utterly buries the studio version, uh, the latter which I've always been a bit so-so on. But yeah, I would rather hear this live version for sure. And the fact that it's three and a half minutes shorter than the St. Anger version is likewise helping me out a whole lot. Like the Black in 2020 cover art, we get a bit of raised spot varnish in parts, the design here, as well as the logo and the title as well. Uh, this time the art is by Pusshead, of course. Uh, love the cover overall, though I'd much prefer the classic logo. I'm not a fan of this one. We do have some cool stuff inside the jacket, though. Uh, of course, we have the record. Uh, this time it is in a plastic uh, sleeve. Kind of reminds me of the old Metal Blade days. Uh, all of these are classic black, by the way. This is the A side. And then that side as well. Some call it the B side. There it is. Uh, funny enough, in this one, you also get a printed inner sleeve if you want to choose. I uh, got the St. Anger design there as well as some notes, brief notes on the recordings. And we also get a poster, basically of the St. Anger artwork, which they did just rip. Isn't that awesome? Uh, I got the artwork, got the Madeline and Anger with the world there, pictures of the band and all of that. So yeah, there it is. St. Anger Live Rarities. So the next record, released October 21st, 2022, is live at Bridge School Benefit 1997. This is edition number seven. My copy is 2,540. So for this one, we have four tracks whose original versions span the 80s and the 90s. Uh, they were all recorded live at the Bridge School Benefit at Shoreline Amphitheater in Mountain View, California on October 19th, 1997. So Newstead on bass instead of Trujillo. And in case you didn't know, the Bridge School is an organization that educates children with severe speech and physical impairments. Uh, the Bridge School has been doing benefit concerts since around 1986, the first of which was with Bruce Springsteen, so now it's basically Metallica's turn. First track on this one is Low Man's Lyric, the studio version of which can be found on Reload. Like Black in 2020, this and the other tracks are acoustic renditions, just so you know. It's similar to the studio version, which is mostly acoustic as it stands, and this one also has the hurdy-gurdy playing from David Miles. Not a big fan of the studio version, so this version is merely so-so for me. The next track on Site A is Poor Twisted Me, whose original version can be found on the Load album. Unlike the previous track, the original is not acoustic, so this differs sharply from the Load version. Overall, I like the load version better, though I didn't exactly hate this acoustic version, despite the somewhat passable vocal performance from Hetfield. Turning over to side B, we get a couple tracks that I'm much more excited about, starting with Fade to Black, whose studio version can be found on, of course, their Ride the Lightning album. It definitely works as an entirely acoustic version, though to be fair, the original starts out acoustic and builds later on. As for this live version, it's good, though I might have wanted some more energy in the performance, but I think maybe that's just a personal preference more than anything else. Still really dig it, though. Without doubt, my favorite track on this EP. Ending the record is The Four Horsemen, whose original version is on their debut album, Kill Em All. This version takes on a almost Western vibe, especially in the verses with the strumming guitar and some of the twang we get as well. It's interesting, and I like it somewhat, but I'm not blown away by it either. Still totally listenable, though. As for extras, there aren't a whole lot of them in here. Um, you do get, in addition to the record, which is in here, you get a printed inner sleeve. You get the schedules of the bands playing that night, as well as some notes on the event from Lars. Um, that's about it for extras. I will show you the vinyl, of course. Uh, there is the... A side and the B side. So yeah, there we go. Live at Bridge School Benefit 1997. 
And the last record released very late on February 1st, 2023 is Leftovers from the Black Album box set. This is edition number eight, if you're counting. Uh, my copy is 7,289. Uh, all material here is from 1990 to 1992. So again, Newstead instead of Trujillo. And I should mention that only the first two tracks have original versions from the Black Album, with the B-side tracks having their original versions on earlier albums. And we'll get to that as they come. First track on side A is the string and vocal mix of Nothing Else Matters, and that's a literal description here. It's just James and orchestral strings, and that's it. Must say, I kind of dig it, even though I'm not the biggest fan overall of the original song. Really like the almost ominous ending and how it plays out the track it is definitely worth hearing. The next track on side A is a rough mix of My Friend of Misery, recorded December 19th, 1990. No vocals on this one, merely the tracked instruments, and it's somewhat raw, though very listenable. Actually, it makes a really decent instrumental, if I really think about it, which of course I'm doing right now in front of you. So yeah, I dug this one too. Flipping over to side B are two live tracks. The first one is No Remorse. It was recorded live at Day on the Green in Oakland, California, October 12th, 1991. And it was funny because when I first saw the Day on the Green on the back, I thought it might be the 1985 version with Cliff but it's the 91 version. I'm not really disappointed, but I was expecting something else. Just reading it in a cursory manner, I guess, is the way to put that. Anyways, fantastic live performance of this classic track. It is, I have a bit of a bias here as I have great memories of covering this song in bands, and it's definitely a favorite of mine from Kill 'Em All. Unfortunately, this track fades out before it even finishes, which kind of stinks a bit, but at least some of it is better than none. I'm not quite sure of that yet. Second live track on this record is The Shortest Straw. It was recorded live at Castle Farms Music Theater in Clairvoye or Charlevoix, Michigan, June 27th, 1992. It is a bit more raw of a recording than the other live track, but it is full of punch and energy. It's a killer track on Injustice for All anyways, and the live version really does do it justice. Yeah, I just said that. Thankfully, this one doesn't fade out prematurely, so you do get a complete song here, which is great, right? As for the extras, there are a couple things in here. Uh, what isn't an extra is the record, but you do get another printed inner sleeve. You get a nice shot of the band there. There is some spot varnish. The logo says Metallica. I don't know if you could really make that out. And uh, liner notes on the recording as well. Uh, and you don't get a second uh, inner sleeve, by the way, with this one or the last one. So there's a bit of an incontinuity uh, of what you get for inner sleeves. It's kind of strange, but there's the A side and there is the B side. So there it is. Leftovers from the Black Album box set. There you go. So out of the four, my favorite is definitely Leftovers from the Black Album box set. Hands down. In fact, this makes me wonder if I should basically stop dragging my feet and finally buy that Black Album box set. Not really sure, but they really did save the best for last in this Vinyl Club run. Enough to make me actually consider that box set again, so maybe. We'll see. So there was at least one major difference between this Vinyl Club's offerings and those of the previous year. Uh, the first installment of the Vinyl Club was comprised of 7-inch records, with the jump to 12 inches happening with this second year. There was a price increase in the description. I think it was about 20 bucks, but that makes sense given the increased record size and additional tracks per record. Uh, the seven inches had two songs apiece, whereas these had three to four, mostly four songs, so not too bad. One sad but true fact about the Vinyl Club is that they are holding off on subscriptions, new subscriptions that is for the time being. Uh, much of it is supply chain issues and overall delays, uh, which is what we experienced with that fourth EP, and it was delayed till February. I think it was supposed to come out in November originally. Uh, not to mention that Metallica is putting out a new studio album next month, and there will be vinyl versions of that. So, again, they're holding off on reinstating the vinyl club, but I really do hope it comes back because I'd absolutely be interested in a third year of this club. Which brings us to the question of, was it worth the money? And I would say, for me, the short answer is yes, though there are some factors to consider. 
Uh, with tax and shipping, I paid $94.16 for the year, and that comes to about $23.54 per record. And once you figure in tax and shipping for other EPs from record labels online, the price is pretty comparable, uh, maybe a dollar or two higher than some. Of course, it also helps to factor in that these are exclusive releases and not widely available through major record stores. So maybe that's worth a buck or two more to fans of the band. Uh, you decide, of course. So what did you think about these releases? Would it be worth the money for you to actually join it when it's back? I know this band can be quite divisive with metal fans. Some like the early years, some like the latter years, some like everything. So I'm sure to get a wide range of opinions on not just these releases, but the band in general. Either way, do let me know what you think in the comments below. Of course, if this is your first time here and you're wondering what I talk about besides exclusive Metallica EPs, my name is Matt, this is the Accusation Network, where each and every week I cover the subject of metal vinyl collecting, as do videos on modern and classic metal in general. If that sounds awesome to you, definitely give me a like. Also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so, and share my videos with some of your friends. And as always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.